Hello, Chef Nadine Johnson and the staff at Escoffier. Uh, my name is Chris Lee, and this is my video submission for the pastry chef instructor position. Today, I'll be having a brief overview of my favorite topic in pastry, pat -a -choux. So let's get started. pat -a -choux is a cornerstone of classic French pastry technique, but what exactly is that? pat -a -choux has a funny sounding name, and that's because it translates literally to paste of a sprout, specifically a cabbage sprout. And there's a silly little illustration right here because when a little choquette, a knob of pat -a -choux dough comes out of the oven, it does kind of have a wrinkly, cabbagey kind of look to it and it's very humble looking, but we know appearances are deceiving. So what is this dough made out of? It's a hot dough that is piped into various shapes, and then it is baked until it has that crackly outside and it's hollow in the center. Where did pat -a -choux come from? Who came up with this idea? Well, we know that when Catherine of Medici came to France in 1540, she brought her pastry chef Pantanelli with her from Florence. And back in the day, everyone wanted to have the most talented people on their court. And all the barbers, all of the jewelers, all of the pastry chefs would compete and try to outdo each other with these extravagant creations. So Pantanelli is credited with coming up with pat -a -choux. So can we recreate pat -a -choux? Yes, we can. As long as we have the building blocks of classic French pastry, we have butter, we have milk, or sometimes people use water or a combination of both, and also sugar or salt, depending on if you're gonna make a sweet or a savory pat -a -choux. So you take these ingredients and then you scald them. You don't wanna boil them off and evaporate some of the liquid, you just want to heat it just until it starts to boil. Then take it off the heat and add your flour. Some people use all-purpose flour or pastry flour, either one is fine, but then you wanna return that after it's mixed together to the heat and actually cook those four ingredients together. So it first starts out a very sticky, gluey mess, but after you've cooked it a few minutes and keep it moving and cook the dough all the way through the center, it'll start to take on a shiny exterior. The way that I usually tell it's done is that it gets kind of a yellowy, weird film on the bottom of the pot. That'll usually be one telltale sign. Another telltale sign that I was taught was that you actually stick your finger into the dough, and if your finger doesn't stick, then it's usually done. So you can use both signs to tell if it's done. And then once you're done with that, you'll put it into your mixer with your paddle attachment. So you wanna put the dough in while it's still hot, and you want to have the mixer start just to kind of release some of the heat from the dough. And then you'll gradually add in your eggs. So depending on how hot you've cooked your dough will depend on how much egg you put in. So it all depends on how much of the moisture has been cooked off, how hot you cooked your dough, but you want to add your eggs in slowly just to keep an eye on the viscosity or how runny your dough will be. And then we wanna get our dough to a phase called the bird's beak, which is where if you stop your mixer, take your paddle attachment and pull your dough out of the mixer bowl, it should detach, but it should be a little bit runny so that it has a bird's beak on the end of the mixer attachment. So we'll talk more about that when we go into our recipe and our demo. So why do we use pat -a -choux? Well, it's incredibly versatile. We can use it for so many things. We can make it savory and make bougeres when we add a little bit of nutmeg and uh, gruyere cheese. We can do decorative pat -a -choux. Going back to Catherine Medici's court, you can make mites, you can make swans, you make all sorts of things out of this incredible dough by piping it in different ways. We can do choquettes, the classic French cream puffs, make them into a tower and in a croquembouche for Christmas. We can also make a pari breast for a buffet table filled with different kinds of creams. And of course, my favorite, eclairs. So I hope you've enjoyed my brief talk about pat -a -choux. 
It's quite a wonderful topic and we can explore many recipes to do with this. So thank you for your time and I hope to hear from you.